Okay, welcome everybody. It is Tuesday night. This is my living room, and tonight we're going to talk about natural frequency resonance and how they form standing waves, which is uh, somewhat appropriate with prom coming up, because what you'll get at prom is, um, hopefully if the DJ is good anyway, is, is you'll get a bunch of people out on the dance floor, and the DJ is going to send a, a sound wave out into the audience. And sometimes when the DJ sends that sound wave or that song down, everybody says, oh, this song is so lame, and everybody walks away. Sometimes that song is that perfect song, everybody loves it, and the room just goes nuts, and people start moving back and forth, and when they move, they, their movement matches the, 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 um, the waves of the song. And that's sort of a loose analogy of what we're looking at tonight. Okay, so, so let's start it out. For starters, I want to introduce you to a term called natural frequency. And what natural frequency is, it's the, the frequency in which an object tends to vibrate. And probably a, a, a good example is, is a guitar string. If you hit a guitar string, one guitar string, it vibrates back and forth, and it makes that same vibration sound every single time you hit it. And so that's the natural frequency of the guitar string. Now, natural frequency on its own isn't that interesting. It, it's not that it doesn't do that much. But when you couple natural frequency with this, with something called resonance, or sometimes it's called forced vibration. And, and how that works is this. You have an object with its natural frequency and it's not moving. Okay, if, if a sound wave or, or even a light wave, if any wave with a frequency that matches the natural frequency of the object, if that wave hits the object, it causes the object to vibrate at its natural frequency. So you have an object that is perfectly at rest, and then a wave comes in, a sound wave, a light wave, any kind of wave. But the one thing that it must be true is that wave has the same frequency as the natural frequency of the object. And when it does that, it causes the object to vibrate. What it causes is a standing wave. Remember yesterday we talked about standing waves? It causes a standing wave to form inside the object. And, and that standing wave, just like we saw before, if the wave keep it, keeps hitting it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, here's a couple of examples of resonance. This is a good one. This is the Tacoma Bridge. And while well, this was the Tacoma Bridge, the Tacoma Bridge doesn't exist anymore. And, and what they found is when they were building at the Tacoma Bridge, the, the, the people working on and building the bridge, they said, you know, it, this doesn't feel right, this bridge, it, it moves an awful lot. And, and what was happening was this, is the bridge, it covered a, a gorge, um, or sorry, like a narrow, so like a, almost a canyon. Okay, and wind would come down the canyon, and that wind had different frequencies to it, different, different sound waves as it passed down. And one of those sound waves was a perfect match for the natural frequency of the bridge, or a part of the bridge. And so when that, that wind with the wave that matched the natural frequency of the bridge hit the bridge, it caused a standing wave to form inside the bridge. And so you got this, okay? This is an example. Here, let me get, get it so you can see it here. I'll put it on the loop so you can see it once or twice. There we go. So this, again, it's too old for trick photography, but that's a standing wave. That's a standing wave that's formed on the bridge. And so what happens is they built the bridge. The bridge had a natural frequency. The wind came down through the narrows, hits the bridge, matches the natural frequency, and causes a standing wave to form in the bridge. And you get this, okay, a standing wave forming on the Tacoma Bridge. And that's a good example of, of resonance. Another example is you listening to me, human hearing. Okay, the ability for humans to hear involves two variables. It involves what's called intensity. We talked about intensity the other day. Intensity is the power of a wave per area. Okay, it's a measure of how loud something is, if you're talking about sound, or how bright something is, if you're talking about light. Okay, the power comes from the source. So, I mean, if you're talking about sound and somebody's yelling, they're giving a lot of power to their sound waves. And then the area comes in, how much area that sound wave takes up. So the farther you are away, the bigger the area of the sound wave, and therefore the smaller the intensity. Which is why if somebody's yelling at you and they're very close to you, you hear it very clearly to the point you're like, oh, I wish this person wasn't yelling quite so loud. 
But if they're yelling and they're farther away, that area increases, and therefore the intensity decreases. You may hear them, you may not. Okay, the same can be said for, for whispering. Okay, if, if somebody's whispering, that's a low power. And so you have to be really close to the person whispering. Otherwise, the intensity gets too small and you don't hear them. Okay, that's which is usually the point of whispering is you're only talking to the person next to you. Frequency is the other one. Okay, and, and with frequency, this is the cool part. This is the resonance part. Your eardrum has a whole bunch of natural frequencies to it, a whole range, ranging from about 100 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Okay, a whole bunch of different natural frequencies on that eardrum, and so if a wave hits it that matches those frequencies, it causes a standing wave to form in your eardrum, it causes your eardrum to vibrate, and then there's a whole mechanism that picks up that vibration and tells your brain that you hear something. Okay. So you get a situation that looks like this diagram here. And this diagram on the, on, the, on the y axis, it measures intensity. Now intensity is the power per area, that's how loud something is. And so if something is really, really loud, you can hear it. And if something is really, really quiet, you can't. Okay? But it also measures along the x axis, it measures frequency. And so what you get is you get frequencies that range from. Uh, just quickly doing a count. Now this says it goes all the way down to about 10 or 20. I don't know if it goes quite that low. But this this is the, the lowest frequency that your eardrum has a natural frequency. And as you can see, the intensity has to be pretty high to hear it. Okay? And as you move over to the right, at 20,000 hertz, that's 20,000 waves per second, that's the highest frequency you can hear. And so uh, the example I would use is a dog whistle. You blow a dog whistle, it's 25,000 hertz, 25,000 waves per second, and, and you don't hear a thing. Even though it has a high, high intensity, you don't have a 25,000 hertz natural frequency in your eardrum. So that, that eardrum, that high frequency wave, smashes into your eardrum, and it doesn't cause a vibration, right? Because there's no natural frequency at 25,000 hertz. Your eardrum doesn't vibrate, you don't hear it. The dog does have a 25,000 hertz a natural frequency, and so it does hear it, and that high intensity hurts the dog. Okay, so we're going to have a little fun here. Um, this is something that they used to do in shopping malls to keep kids from loitering. Okay, what I have is a bunch of different frequencies, and what we're going to do is we're going to mess with this line here on the right. Okay, now I'm 39 years old, and so let's start with lost my iTunes. There we go. Let's start with this one. This is 22,300 hertz. I'm going to put the microphone near the near the uh, the speaker and and see if if you can hear it. All right. Because I, I can't hear that. Okay, I have actually lost this range. Okay, as you get older, this line it moves to the left, and so some of the high frequencies you can't hear that you used to be able to hear when you were a kid. And so I, I can't actually hear that. So maybe it worked for you, maybe it didn't. But let's try a few others and see see what we can do. You know what you could do is, is take the laptop in a room with your parents and, and just turn the speakers up and see if see if they can hear it. And assuming that you can. Okay, let's let's try another one. Just a sec. So this next one is about twenty thousand hertz. See what you can do. All right. Again, all I could hear was the skip. I could hear it flip back to the beginning. I, I couldn't hear anything in the middle. Maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. I'm, I hope, usually this demo works in class. I don't know if it works over the over the internet or not. We'll see. Let's try this one. As I said, I'm 39. Okay, this is for 30 and younger. So this is 15,800. So let's check this out.
right now. Marcinko's got a big smile on her face because she can probably hear it, but I can't hear it. I, I can't pick that one up. I could have that go in my entire class, and I wouldn't hear a thing. But the students sure would. They they would be probably pretty ticked off with me by the end of the class. All right, now this one I can't hear. This is 49 and younger, and, and I mean the, the ages aren't set in stone. If you go downstairs and your dad's 40, 49 or 50 and he can hear it, it you know it, it's not like you turn 49 and you can no longer hear it but let's let's try this one out yeah i don't like that yeah we're, we're gonna shut that one off I, I don't like that but uh one day that won't bother me right now it still does okay so that that's how natural frequency works with your eardrum Okay, if you if you have a part of your eardrum that matches the natural frequency of the sound wave, you hear it. And if you don't, you don't hear it. The other part of sound is is what we said it was intensity. All right, and if it's a low intensity, it drops below the threshold of, of hearing, which is down here. If it's a high intensity, it crosses the threshold of pain. It starts to hurt like a rock concert. And intensity is measured with decibels. And how a decibel works is an increase of 10 decibels is 10 times louder. So if an increase of, of 20 decibels is 10 times 10, is 100 times louder. And an increase of 30 decibels is 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000 times louder. So if you look at a conversation, it's 60 decibels. And a rock concert is 120 decibels. So that's 10 times 10. It's 100 times 10 is 1,000 times 10 is a 10,000 times 10 is 100 times 10 is a million. A rock concert is usually about a million times louder than a conversation, which is why rock concert, you see, it crosses the threshold of pain. Often you go to a concert and your ears will be ringing at the end. It, it hurts. You've, you've put your ears through some discomfort. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is this, is the greenhouse effect. Now, you have greenhouse gases in the air are are gases that have a natural three frequency that represent um, that match infrared light and the earth is a giant infrared light bulb it glows infrared light just like the sun glows visible light the thing is you can't see infrared light so you don't see it glowing but if you look at this here we have three carbon dioxide molecules vibrating different ways Okay, and each of those natural frequencies is the same natural frequency as infrared light. And so what happens is our, our glowing light bulb underneath us, the Earth, sends up infrared light. That frequency matches the natural frequency of carbon dioxide, causes it to vibrate. So as you can see, the, the carbon dioxide molecule is moving fast. And remember that temperature is the average kinetic energy of a molecule. And so what you're doing is you're increasing the temperature of carbon dioxide it sends that energy back down to the earth and you increase the temperature of the earth okay so that's natural frequency and resonance i hope it, it clears some stuff up what we're going to do now is is we're going to talk about um, a, a little project we're going to have you guys work on a little musical instrument activity i'm kind of excited to see what you'll come up with so have a great night welcome to my living room and uh, yeah we'll talk to you again soon